All right, so let's take a look at graphing exponential growth and decay functions. There's a big parallel between this and what we saw with geometric sequences and series from our last sections. So go ahead and take down your EQ and then we'll discuss that. Pause the video if you need more time. All right, so exponential growth. First of all, what's the root word that you see inside of exponential? I see that word exponent. And so what that's going to tell us now is that our variable is going to be in the exponent, and that's going to make all of our values change really, really fast. Okay? And if you think about, hey, when we were working with geometric, uh, geometric sequences, we had something like this, a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. The n was the changing term. So the changing term in the exponent made all of our values in the sequence, the next term in the sequence, grow really, really quickly. And that's exactly what we're going to see here. Okay? So the exponential function is going to look like this, f of x equals b to the x. And this looks a little weird because, hey, we have a new Vari variable here. We have b, and it seems like we have two variables, but b is not going to actually be considered a variable. b is going to be our base, and it is some known value. Okay, The exponent is what is unknown. That's our variable. So what makes an exponential function exponential is when the variable is in the exponent. Okay, So what does that mean? We can think of an example like this. Give me a number for base 2. 2 to the x power. This would be an exponential function, but it doesn't have to be an easy number. I could see something like 1 over 7 as my base to the x power. Both of these would be considered exponential functions because the variable is in the exponent. I know the value of my base, but the base has changed for each different function. So, what does that mean for us when we actually want to try and graph these things? Well, let's take a look at the two different kinds of exponential functions we have and their properties. So exponential growth still is going to look like f of x equals b, our base, to the x. But the important distinction here is when we have b being greater than or equal to 1, specifically the absolute value of b. Okay, so this means uh, we're going to have some large number in here for our base. Not necessarily large, but it has to be greater than 1. Okay, so the next property we're going to see is it gives us our first point. f of 0 is always going to equal 1 for the parent function of any exponential growth function. Okay, why is that? Let's look at the examples we were talking about just a moment ago. So if I had y equals 2 to the 0 power, anything to the 0 power by definition we remember is 1. Okay, So that tells me that I have a point right here when x is 0, my y value is 1. So now what I want to do is I want to think about what are some other patterns. Now if I were to have negative values for my exponent and this exponent starts to decrease, anytime that we have a negative exponent that tells us to flip the base into its reciprocal. And if I'm raising reciprocals to a power, those numbers are actually going to get really, really small. And that tells me I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So every one of our parent functions is going to have the horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. That's like our boundary, the line we're never going to cross. So what's the, what does that mean for us then for the shape of this? Well, again, in the negative side, when x is going to the left, I'm going to be getting closer and closer to 0. But as I get positive, when I raise things up to positive exponents, the numbers are going to get really, really big. Okay? So we're going to have a shape that's going to look like this. This is our most basic shape for exponential growth functions. Okay? Now, each exponential function is going to be different depending on that base. How are we going to find out what all the other points are? We're going to use x equals 0, 1, and 2 as those parent function points. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at decay functions. With exponential decay, the big difference here is that we don't have a base that's going to be greater than 1. We have a base that's going to be in between negative 1 and 1. Well, what does that mean? That means we have our base is a fraction. 
but it can't be an improper fraction. Improper fraction would be something like 5 over 4. 5 over 4 is still greater than 1. So base is a fraction, but not an improper one. Okay, we're still going to see the same idea that even if we choose the example like we wrote down before, 1 over 7 to the 0 power is still going to equal 1. Anything to the 0 power, even if it's a fraction, is going to be equal to 1. So what that tells me is I'm going to have this point here again, 0 comma 1. And then I want to pay attention to, hey, what's going to happen with an asymptote? Am I going to have another one? I sure am. It's going to be the exact same thing. So every one of these is going to start off with the same couple of basic ideas. We have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0, and we have that point at 0, comma 1. But how do decay functions change? How are they different? This is the big, big idea here. We always want to be able to identify whether it's growth or decay, because this is going to tell us what's going to be the easiest way to graph and that is going to be by choosing the right values for x to plug in and find for y for our parent function. Okay, So here, what the big difference is for growth, we used 0, 1, and 2 for our parent function points for x. Here we're going to use negative 2, negative 1, and 0. Okay, So this tells me that the first thing we need to do is get really good at identifying when something is going to be growth or decay. So let's take a look at a couple of examples, uh, being able to identify them. Growth or decay is always dependent on B, okay, the base. So what's my base of this particular function, y equals 21 to the x power? The base is B, 21. Now, we want to compare this to the number 1 itself. So is 21 greater than 1? It is, and so in that case, we see that this is going to be a growth function. Okay, next thing, uh, next example we have is negative 3 over 4 to the x power. The thing I care about is the base. I don't care about that negative right now. What I care about is this base. And so I say, well, how about 3 over 4? It is in between negative 1 and positive 1. Okay, so if it's in between those two numbers, that tells me it's going to be a decay function. Okay, next one we look at is 4 over 3. And we see 4 over 3, well, that's an improper fraction, right? So even though we see that it's a fraction, don't immediately start to think decay. Notice this number. See what its relationship is to the number 1. And 4 over 3 is greater than 1. And if it's greater than 1, then that is a growth function, okay? So what we want to do now is look at a couple of examples. We have four different graphs to make today. Go ahead and start the next video where we see 7-4 graphing exponential growth or decay examples.